very warm welcome to the very first session of the most awaited series sprint x for icsc 10 how excited are you how excited are you you are going to tell me in the comment section because i'll be waiting for your answers i'll be waiting to hear from you because i remember from past i think uh two months Whenever I was taking a session, every time one thing was constantly appearing in my live chat or in my comments, ma'am, when are you going to get started with the sprint sessions for ICSE? So guys, here we are and this is an amazing, amazing news and an amazing start to the sprint series for ICSC 10. So guys, let's get started with the very first session today on the Indian National Movement Session number one with me, your master teacher for social sciences at Vedantu, Ankana, hoping all my dear bachcha parties are doing absolutely fine and amazing. So guys, let's get started. Let's have a quick look. So this is how the flow of the sessions are going to be. We'll begin and for each and every session, we will be having a quick glance at the topics that we will be try covering up through that particular session in forms of different, different questions. So today we get started with the Indian National uh, Movement Part 1, where we, where we are going to talk about the first war of independence, which is the revolt of 1857, growth of nationalism, first phase of Indian National Movement and the second phase, and then of course the Muslim League. So this is what we are going to cover today. Let's quickly move on and talk about the schedules so guys this is your schedule okay this is the schedule that we will be following so i'll be basically showing you the schedule for all the subjects along with the time that it is going to be premiered at so that you do not miss on any of the sessions so or just in case even if you do you know where to look for it so this is for physics with anoop sir this is for chemistry with anubha ma'am this is for maths with Gopal, sir. Okay, uh, I see quite a lot of chapters. Biology with Ambika, ma'am. Okay, this is social science with me. And a lot and lots of chapters, guys. Many, many chapters. And English with Shweta, ma'am. Amazing, amazing. Chalo, on that note, quickly hit the like button if you are super excited for your sessions. If you're very, very, uh, you know, you were uh, expecting and anticipating for this and it has finally happened and you cannot express your happiness, hit the like button right now. Keep sharing the video with your friends if they're not aware about the Sprint X series for ICSE. Do tell them about this and make sure that you are subscribing to the channel so that so that whenever the next series or I mean like whenever the next session comes, be it for social science, maths, English, whatever subject, you get the notification immediately and you do not miss on the session. Now, let me quickly check the focus of the camera. I hope it is focused and let's get started with this amazing quotation which says self-belief and hard work will always own you success and Virat Kohli has said this. But I think... Um, it, it, it's beyond that. I don't need to explain this. If you believe in yourself and you know, see, the potential is inside you. If you do not recognize it, nobody, nobody, guys, can actually do anything. And that's, it's a fact, right? And when uh, Hanumanji did not know that he had the power to fly, and despite of having it inside him, because he did not have the confidence, he was not aware of his potential, he could not fly. Someone had to come and tell him that. Please do not wait for somebody to come and tell you that you can fly. I am telling you right now, guys, you can fly. Just believe in yourself and keep up with the hard work and you people are going to rock. So let's get started with the very first question. What was the doctrine of lapse? The very first question, this is a two marker question. Normally in exam, but you, you would take three to four minutes because you think of what was the doctrine of lapse and then you would think, uh, okay, this, this was there and then you would write, write down the points and all of this would take three to four minutes. But here we are going to finish this in next two minutes. Doctrine of lapse. Lapse means what? To expire. So this doctrine of lapse was pretty simple. It was that if, the kings did not have the rightful heir, then 
द होल किंगडम और द पावर वुड एक्चुअली गो टू वुड एक्चुअली लैप्स वुड एक्सपायर इट वुड नॉट बी अंडर देर कंट्रोल एंड विल गेट पास ऑन टू द ब्रिटिशर्स so this was their way of expansion and actually gaining the territories of indian kings so this was one thing in fact rani lakshmi bai actually fought against this only when this was happening for jhansi they did have a, 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 a i mean like they did have a son but he was an adopted son they did not have their own son so if you did not have your own a uh, child and that to a son it would actually fall under the doctrine of lapse so according to doctrine of lapse if an indian ruler died without a male heir as i told you right without a male heir his kingdom would lapse okay so over here i would just want to say that if uh, there is not a male heir then the whole thing is going to lapse it's going to expire and fall down under the british you know um what what, what should i say under the british uh, authority okay so that they will actually take it away from the indian rulers so his kingdom would lapse that is it would come under the east india company's territory in india so that was the deal with the doctrine of lapse it was just a way uh, that britishers uh, you know one of the ways that britishers were using to expand the idea of expansion and acquisition of land this was one method moving on to the second question name each of the organizations founded by jyotiba phule and raja ram mohan roy but shall we know that raja ram mohan roy was working towards monotheism towards awareness and you know to abolish the sati system and whereas jyotiba phule was actually working towards education of the women education of the backward socially backward society classes and all of that so the places i mean like the organizations were satya shodak samaj for jyotiba phule and raja ram mohan roy had found brahmo samaj so this is again a two marker question we i think have finished actually way earlier than 2 minutes moving on to the next question mention any two economic factors responsible for the growth of nationalism in india economic factors but cha one thing we have always been aware that taxes were being collected right but they were not being used for the welfare of the people so there were many factors okay but the two things definitely was and i think even our early nationalist has spoken about this the taxes were not being used where was this tax going for the maintenance of army uh, or probably for the development of their own country development of own country but not for the citizens of india so basically it was draining out right it was being drained out so that is what was happening so the answer would be here drain of wealth from india was one definitely a factor second poor conditions of decay of handicrafts and cottage industries because the britishers were constantly bringing their goods right they were constantly importing it which were a uh, factory which were manufactured in factories and that was taking away all the credits that these poor people had and no money was being earned by them Now let's quickly talk about one very important thing that is the Vedanta Pro subscription. Guys, why is this so important? Because uh, the dates have definitely been postponed, and this is the most crucial time because you need to revise a lot. And right now you must be realizing that hey, this is not done, this is not done, that is not done, and there's so much of pressure on your head. so what is it that is going to make you super equipped and absolutely ready for your board exams definitely a lot of revision and some prep which is yet to be done so here is your solution guys with unlimited live classes and the best part is that with each class in each session you have fun and high level life quizzes now these quizzes give you an advantage and opportunity of competing with the students throughout the world there would be people sitting everywhere right australia dubai wherever whenever they are competing with you and imagine the level of exposure that you're getting with this 
at the same time just in case you missed the live session there's so many there's a high probability that you might miss on few then you get to have an option of interactive replays where you also get the leader both just like the live session so replays are not going to be boring anymore and of course the content so i think a lot of you are here because you love vidantu's content so i think that goes unsaid but the added advantage again over here is the handwritten notes by the master teachers even that with every notes that you get is going to be available for you and i think a lot of notes that teachers write uh, while teaching is very useful right that's the that, that's the extra additional thing that you're getting along with your and all your doubts is going to be solved and it's not just going to be the master teacher but also the class teacher so different different kind of uh, you know ideas and uh, added values is going to come together from doubt solving by different teachers and of course every session has some assignments which gives you a time to think over whether you have understood the concept or not and test every month but but the brownie points comes here for this particular subscription because you get all the micro courses and crash courses which is right now have which i mean like all these sessions that have started at this point to help you out crash courses micro courses all of them which is available for a month two months to get you super prepped up for your final board exams so guys do not miss this opportunity because less is going to be a lot more now with the vidantu pro subscription link is given in the description box you can also go on vdnt.in/ytpro and just make sure that you're applying the code akpro over there because that is where you are going to get the discount if you actually see this plan which was for 2699 is now going to be available only for 2159 rupees which is less than 2200 rupees and when you actually do the calculation it's going to cost you only 11 rupees per session which is super super awesome so do not miss on this opportunity as i told you the link is going to be there in the description box you can also find it pinned in the comment section in the live chat also you can see it just make sure that you're applying the code akepro because this is the code that is going to give you the discount now let's move on to the next question briefly explain the immediate causes of the great revolt but yeah as we know the major major cause was the cartridge controversy what had happened was that everyone was told see there were all people from all walks of life all religion everywhere and they had their own religious beliefs right whether they were the hindus or the muslims everyone had their own religious beliefs now the problem was that it was said that the new cartridges that had come had been polished polished with what polished with the fat of animals okay but what kind of animals cows and pigs now the problem is that the hindus worship the cows and muslims are not you know by their religious because of their religious beliefs they do not eat pigs so for both of them to touch their mouth with the fat of these animals was against their religious beliefs and was going to hurt their sentimental uh, values their religious sentiments but this is something the britishers did not realize and that was a big big problem so the immediate cause was the introduction of infield rifles as i told you there was a rumor that the cartridges actually was used uh, you know to be used for the rifles were greased with the fat of cows and pigs this sparked off the mutiny because there were people from different different beliefs as i told you the religious sentiment the sentiments were hurt and i think this always has been a very very powerful power, you know factor for to to drive all these revolutions and to drive all of these revolts and the same thing happened over here it sparked up the mutiny on 10th may 1857 all the three sepoy regiments at meerut they rose in revolt so the main factor as i told you guys was the cartridges this is what actually led to the whole mutiny 
मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन बच्चों दिस इज अ थ्री मार्कर क्वेश्चन एक्सप्लेन एनी थ्री पॉलिटिकल कॉजेस ऑफ रिवोल्ट इन एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन बच्चों देवर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ कॉजेस वी जस्ट हैव टू मैंशन थ्री यू कैन मैंशन एनी थ्री राइट यू कुड टॉक अबाउट बहादुर शाह जफर यू कुड टॉक अबाउट द डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ लैब्स विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट वॉज डेफिनेटली अ फैक्टर यू कुड टॉक अबाउट हाउ एनेक्सेशन ऑफ वेरियस प्लेसेज इन द नेम ऑफ अ मैन फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट वॉज हैपनिंग वेर एज इट वॉज जस्ट अ डिस्गाइज सू विच दे वर ट्राइंग टू स्नैच अवे आवर टेरिटरी सो इट कुड बी ऑफ अवध इट कुड बी ऑफ यू नो बहादुर शाह जफर इट कुड बी about the uh, it could be about nana saheb you could talk about any one so let's look at three factors quickly we know that the uh, lord dalhousie's policy of annexation and the doctrine of laps made the indian rulers angry and insecure the prominent states which fell the victim of the doctrine were satara jhansi and nagpur as i told you rani of jhansi lakshmi bai she actually has brought this to our attention at a great extent we already are aware about all of these things right so that was one very major factor then of course lord canning declared the bahadur shah's successors would not be allowed to use the imperial title that is of the king so this is something that was not going to be allowed anymore and that was something that offended the people to a great extent because what they took this was as an insult towards the king and that is something that the british should not have done they should probably have just been respectful towards the rulers lord dalhousie stopped the pension of nana sahab this was another reason that led to this problem okay moving on to the next question write any three contributions of raja ram mohan roy i think he has very been a very active worker okay he has very actively made people aware of a lot of problems also he has great contributions to the development and awareness of the society he actively actually fought, uh, fought against the sati system right this is one uh, i mean like abolition of the sati system is a great uh, a lot of the credibility of that thing being abolished goes to raja ram mohan roy so raja ram mohan roy condemned evil customs like sadi sati parda you know parda system where the people had to where the women had to cover cover their face with a veil which was quite unfair child marriage forced widowhood polygamy uh, female infanticide and discrimination against women so all of these social ill practices is what used to be there which he condemned and constantly fought against and he very actively took steps to stop these and has even resulted into something very very substantial he began a struggle against the caste distinction prevailing in the society including the evil of untouchability he laid the foundation of an english school and spread of education of modern subjects so that the western knowledge could come within the reach of indian students as i told you guys these early nationalists or in general people at that time they really wanted indians to be educated and equipped through education you know and ultimately be aware so that they could actually be actively the part of the system of the institutions of the british government so that was a major idea you can also talk about how he used to condemn polytheism and actually believed in monotheism and in fact used to talk about what are the uses of it and how educated he was in general all of this had led to the development of the society and these were his contributions moving on to the next question what are the three what are the objectives of the indian national congress this was actually back in 1880s now bachcho this is a four marker question what we have to maintain is at least four points are being mentioned normally you would take 6 to 7 minutes to write this answer we're going to finish it within 5 minutes way before that okay so uh definitely we know that uh, you know indian congress was actually not laid out as indian congress right in the beginning in fact uh 
uh, uh, A.O. Hume, who was actually a civil servant of the Britishers, started this as a union. Okay, it began as a union, but then Nairoji and other people figured that there has to be association which has to consolidate all the viewpoints like uh, Surendranath Banerjee had his own idea, right, of uh, uh, Indian National Conference. So all of this was ultimately combined and the union was established as the Indian National Congress. So what were its objectives? Naturally, definitely to promote nationalist political workers from different parts of country to promote friendly relations between all of these. So we know that, as I told you, that there were various groups and associations that were associations that were actively working with the same purpose and agenda against the Britishers. So these people, the leaders like Nairoji, uh, Surendranath Banerjee, Jyotiba Phule, there were so many people who were working together, right? And they kind of figured and realized that they need to come together. All of these contributions in different, different parts were segregated and were scattered. All of this had to come together for it, them to be strong. So that is what happened and was laid down in the form of the INC, Indian National Congress. To develop and consolidate the feelings of national unity irrespective of caste, religion, province. So this was going to look beyond all, sorry, look beyond all social differences. So that was another factor to formulate popular demands and present them before the government. See, guys, this was the major, major agenda. This is why these associations were formed in the first place was to surface all the all the demands and challenges. Yes, subsequent factor. Tha. This was the major factor. And finally, all of them came together in form of INC and to train and organize the public opinion in the country. As I told you, all of this was pretty scattered. So they wanted to bring them all together, unite them. So in one way or the other, just stay together, stick together and present a very strong front in front of the government. Again, this is a four marker question. Explain any four military causes of the revolt in 1857. As I told you, four marker question will mostly ask for four points. You can normally also go for five points if you have and the number has specifically not been mentioned that express uh, explain four causes, five causes. You have to make sure that the number of marks, the weightage of the question, that in a, that number of points have also been mentioned in your answer. Now, talking about the military causes, we have a whole list of it. But we definitely know that there was a clear disparity, right? Disparity in terms of the positions that were assigned. The higher positions were actually kept, you know, higher posts were only available for the Britishers. This was a major cause of the, uh, what do you say, the military people being very, very sad and upset. Also, they were not allowed, disparity is one. Second, they were not allowed to wear, wear any religious symbols. So this was another thing that, see, they had their own religious sentiments and that was constantly being hurt. So factors like these had led to the military rise and revolt and dissatisfaction, right? So ill treatment of Indian soldiers. Indian soldiers in the British army in India were ill-fed, badly housed. So not equal treatment. So not just equal, but in fact, bad treatment is what they were facing okay so no equal treatment was major major cause and also there was disregard for the culture and habits of the indian soldier it could be in terms of social or socio religious practices okay socio religious in nature now the general service enlistment act under this act passed in 1856 was a threat to the brahmin indian soldiers in the british army why now they had to actually travel and under the, for the brahmins they had a belief that if they actually flew or traveled overseas that would actually be kind of a commitment of a sin okay leaving their own homeland now because uh, of this act they had to they were now kind of 
forced under this law to travel overseas and again their religious beliefs were being hurt okay this act required soldiers to be sent overseas to serve british army but among brahmin crossing the sea was a taboo okay and this negligence of the british army led resentment for them because they were not being considerate uh, enough they were being unempathetic empathy was not being shown by them bleak prospects of promotions as i told you that the high posts were mostly reserved for the britishers and even if there were uh, you know uh, indian soldiers who were very very experienced the maximum that they could go to was a subedar which was very unfair so all higher positions in the employment were reserved for the british irrespective of their performance even the indian soldiers formerly occupying high positions in the armies of native prince could not rise above the rank of the subeda the future of the indian soldiers was bleak without any chances of promotion then why would anyone want to be in the army they had to ultimately rise up to ask for a better future and better promotional opportunity deprivation for allowances the extension of the british dominion in india adversely affected the service conditions of the sepoys they were required to serve in the areas away from their homes without extra payment so imagine they had to take care of you know uh, their uh, livelihood not just that plus send money to home there were no travel allowances as well okay and additional foreign services allowances none of these were given to them which actually used to be a part of their salary salary earlier the post office act of 1854 added the burden on them because it withdrew the privilege of free postage enjoyed enjoyed by the sepoys now guys realize why is this a problem they were away from home they had double cost to bear of themselves and of their home they had to manage in the same salary where there was no additional benefits there were travel costs right travel costs were there on top of it they needed to communicate with their family members but with the removal of the free postage they had to now pay for all the communications that they were making so they were basically also disconnected from their family because it was difficult to survive in that amount of money so naturally they could not stay in touch as much with their family as they were earlier and now they had to feel disconnected from their family so that was another huge problem with this we have finished the first war of independence of 1857 and the growth of nationalism now guys in the next session we will be finishing the rest of these they're going to be uh, almost two sessions i've already shared in the schedule now let's quickly look at the homework question of today's session on which day and your resentment of mangal pande at barakpur took place May ninth, eighteen fifty-seven. March twenty-ninth, nineteen fifty-seven. February twenty-sixth, eighteen fifty-seven. Or May tenth, eighteen fifty-seven. Do not forget to put your answers in the comment box below. So today we have finished the Indian National Movement Part One. Tomorrow we will be doing Part Two. It will be coming at nine p.m. Guys, do not forget. to attend the session at the same time do not forget about the vedantu pro subscription as i told you you can find the link in the description box it is also pinned in the comment section this is the code that you are supposed to use make sure to use the code and do not forget to hit the like button if you really enjoyed the first session of the sprint x which is finally started for icc students as well people make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you do not miss on the session the whole lots of session that is going to come your way for all the subjects keep sharing it with your friends so that they also stay on track and i will see you guys very very soon people make sure to put your answers in the comment section and do tell me in the comment section box how are you liking the sessions is it helping you or not what else do you want us to do and i will see you guys very very soon Till then, stay home, stay safe, and take good care of yourselves. Bye, bye, guys. Good night.